doing tonight? Okay. Oh, yes, indeed. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. I'm so excited. We got a really great, great show for you tonight. Something I've been wanting to do for a long time. You know, growing up in New England, kind of got spoiled as a young boy, you know, kind of those smells of lobsters steaming and fried clams and clam cakes and chowder. Just starting to feel the love now, Hilda. You know, everybody's not lucky enough to live by the beach. And uh, that was the inspiration for this show. You can't just, like, get 40 or 50 of your favorite people and head down to the water and dig up the sand and make this clam bake thing, right? But what you can do is create the same kind of party right in your kitchen. That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to have a little beach party. Yes, indeed. Speaking about party, got Doc Gibbs in the end of the line, man. Yeah. Hey, life's a beach party. That's what we're going to do tonight, a little beach party picnic right here on Emerald Live. Doing all right, everybody doing all oh, look at all this, huh? Yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a while. What we're gonna do for you guys tonight, taking the beach party inside. We actually happen to find one of these fancy schmancy pans. Oh, yeah, this is the real deal. Hey, not everybody can go out there and dig up the sand, like I said, put the hot rocks on there, build a clam bake, but you can do it on your stove or on your barbecue grill. Listen to this. Lobster and corn chowder. That really brings back some memories. <laughs> and after you taste these clam cakes that I'm going to make... Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. You'll hear the tide coming in with those. <laughs> but first, we're going to get started with our kicked-up clam bake. That's what we're going to call it, the kicked-up clam bake. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah. Right on the stove. All right. Check it out. Check it out. Oh. oh, yeah, man. So we got this pan on the stove. First thing that we're going to do, we're going to set up the burners here. And uh, we're going to start, I guess, about medium heat on these burners would be good. We're going to start with that, medium at least. And then what we're going to do now is we've got just regular water in here. I don't know where you get your water. Where I get mine, it don't come seasoned. <laughs> so we got to season the water first. How we're going to do that? I've got some sea salt. How appropriate. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, good salt here. We got some sea salt that we're going to add first. We're going to add a few beers in here. <laughs> Flavor that water. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh. You know, that works so well, I think I'll add another one. Oh. Oh, yes. And that works so well, I think I'll add another. Why not? Oh. Yes, indeed. And I don't like uneven numbers. <laughs> so we're going to add another one. Make it four beers. All right. Now that we've got the four beers in there, I'm going to use this con concentrated shrimp and crab boil we use in New Orleans. Kind of, ooh, spice things up. Just a little bit. Oh, no, just a little bit. It'll gag you. <laughs> Now, we're going to start the clam bake by putting in potatoes first. What cooks the longest 
goes in first, okay? So we're going to put in these new potatoes, onions. Oh, yeah, babe, I love them. Onions like that, oh, put a few in your pocket. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to put the first batch, some seaweed. <laughs> hey, it's the real deal. This is, hey, we're really cooking here, you know? So we've got some seaweed that we're going to start with. Are you guys with me so far? Yeah. All right. So now the lid goes back on. And we're going to start our kicked up clam bake. OK? Kicked up clam bake. Yes, indeed. While that begins, I'm going to start the chowder. And what I did is I steamed in some water and a little bit of spice, some lobster, okay? I'm gonna crack it up, save the juices here, and I'm gonna take the meat right out of the shell. First the tail, very simple. Crack it like that, save these juices like this in a little bowl. And then we'll open this up like such. <laughs> oh, look at that, huh? That's a good snack. All right, I'm going to take the claw meat out of here as well. Going to save the shells because that's what's going to start our lobster corn chowder. When we come back, another knock. Stick around. Cliff on keyboards. Lewis is on the horns tonight. Every night. Charles on bass. Mr. Teddy on drums. Thank you, man. Thank you. Doc Gibbs in the house. Oh, so excited. Having a clam bake right here in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, now, getting to the chowder. We're gonna just take the rest of the meat out of the, uh, out of the claws, save those shells. Now we've got our lobster meat. Now, what we wanna do to make the chowder, we wanna start by flavoring a broth. We wanna make a broth, a lobster broth. Here's how we're gonna do that. <laughs> Little olive oil. <laughs> now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add the shells in here. Even though that we poached them, okay, in, the, in this water here, salt and pepper, save that. Don't throw that out. There's all that lobster flavor in there. You with me so far? Okay, so now we got the shells going in here. The bodies, see that liquid right there? Oh, that's yummies. Don't waste that yummy stuff. Now, Beside the shells in here, in the hot oil, we're gonna add some onion, some carrot, some celery. Then I'm gonna add some peppercorns. Oh yeah, you gotta have a little peppercorn in there. Little thyme, you could use dry of course. Couple of bay leaves. I don't know about you, you gotta have garlic though, right? Exactly. Now, since it's going to be a lobster corn chowder, you know what's missing. Corn. <laughs> it's unbelievable. 
So now we're going to start cooking this. Now, here's the thing, folks. Look. Got to season it. A little salt. Some pepper. Even though we got the peppercorns in there. Then what we're going to do is this. We're going to take fresh corn. And you want to just take it off the cob. Now, you see, if you don't have anything on the board, it goes everywhere. Okay? You'll be chasing corn for days. <laughs> so... Here's a little trick that I'll show you. If you put just a little towel like this, sort of like a net, it's going to catch the corn. <laughs> See that? Catch the corn. Now, these corn cobs have a lot of flavor. At least I think they do. So what we're going to do now is take the cobs. We're going to take the corn and put that aside. We're going to take the cobs and we're going to put them in there. Because there's all that good yummy stuff in there. The sugar and, you know, spice and everything nice. Now, we'll keep our corn and the lobster meat for later on when we're going to have the soup, the broth. All right, what's going to make it even more flavorful now is this. That water that we cooked the lobsters in, that we saved, goes right on top. Let it come to a boil. We're going to let it simmer for about 30 minutes. Get nice and happy. You with me so far? Yeah. yeah. Just checking. <laughs> now, back to the clam bake. <sighs> Can you smell the love in here already? Yeah. Now, here's what we're going to do. The next layer, artichokes, because I like artichokes. <laughs> so we're going to put artichokes in here now. And then, I've got a couple of different types of sausage. <laughs> it's a pork fat thing. I got sweet Italian sausage, hot Italian sausage, and some linguiça, or chorice, or chorizo. So we're going to put the fresh sausage in here now. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Okay. See? We can put some beach music on. We can... Put that wave machine on. Now we're going to put the top back of this. Right? The sausage is in there getting happy. Artichokes, potatoes, onions. You can't smell the love at home. Or smell it, for that matter. But we can here. Don't even think about touching that dial. Stick around. Doc Kids. of Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Hey, hey, welcome back, everybody. Emerald Lagasse here. Hey, is it smelling good in here, folks? Yeah. It's smelling good. It's smelling like lobster and chowder. Oh, I feel like I'm on the beach. But life is a beach, isn't it? Now, look, that broth that we're making simmering away i said about 30 minutes okay now that's just the broth part of it now what i want to show you is the chowder part of it 
Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start in another little Dutch oven, saucepan, soup pot, whatever you have. And you want to start by crisping up some bacon. Oh, yeah, it's a pork fat thing. <laughs> you know, sometimes after I get the bacon crisp up, I'll take it out. I'm not doing that <laughs> this time. I just changed the dish. It is now going to be a lobster, corn, and bacon chowder. Ooh. All right. So I've got this delicious broth happening. I'm going to uh, let that cool a little bit and start now the base of the chowder. Once the bacon gets crispy, that's pretty crispy to me. Could be a little more, but that's crisp enough. Then what we're going to do now is we're going to add onions, celery. Sometimes I use leeks, too. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh. <laughs> now, beside adding a little salt to season this, because the bacon has a little salt, I want just a little tiny bit of spice to this, so I'm going to add a little cayenne pepper to this. Oh, yeah. Life is a beach. Now, we're going to cook the four or five minutes, okay? Then, what we're going to do after four or five minutes, woo, we're going to begin to start straining our broth. So I've got a little strainer here. We'll come back and get some more of that. So we've got our broth kind of straining. Why we're doing that is because, again, we don't want, like, the peppercorns and all that stuff in there. We've got now lobster broth. Now we're going to make it into chowder. Here we go. Four or five minutes, the vegetables cook. Look at this, an escapee. <laughs> then I'm going to add about 30 cloves of garlic in here. <laughs> I'm going to add a little butter. I'm going to show you why. A couple of reasons. A, the butter is going to stop foaming up. It's going to give it wonderful flavor. When the butter foams up, can you smell that? You know, I would call a cable company right now if I were you complain you don't have smell-o-vision. <laughs> Shame on you. Because we're having a little beach party right here, aren't we, guys, huh? Yeah. All right. I added the thyme in there earlier, whole, in the broth. But now, I don't want to be eating stems. So now we're just going to add the thyme itself, stripping it off the stems, OK? Little thyme in there. <laughs> now we got a little thyme. Ah, a little more. OK. Now, see the butter's melted? Here's now what we're going to do is we're going to make, we're going to make a roux with a little flour, which is going to thicken it. A little more. See, it's thick. Now, you don't need to cook this other than just for a couple of minutes. We're just going to cook the flour out. OK, you guys are with me? Yeah. All right, once we cook the flour out like this. Now, while that's cooking, back over to the clam bake. Another notch is what we say, right? Here's what we're going to do now. We're going to add some sweet corn and some garlic, just split in head. All right? Oh, wait. We're going to add some lobsters. Oh, give me a break, will you? We're cooking here. Now. Well, look, if it bothers you, we'll cover them up. How's that? <laughs> All right? All right, we got our top on here. Somewhat. There we go. All right. You see, we're building this thing, right? We're on, like, the third or fourth stage right now. Got the lobsters in there. Now... Potatoes, artichokes, onions. 
Okay, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our strained broth and we're going to add it now into this roux. And we're going to stir this roux up right now. Hey, take it easy over there. <laughs> What's going to happen, that roux is going to be the thickening agent. When it comes to a boil, we'll know how thick it is. So if we need to add more broth, if it's too thick, we'll add more broth. Okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to add some potatoes. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. Lock in. <laughs> Lagasse here. We're having a little beach party indoors. Hey, you can take it indoors. I'm loving this. I hope you guys are loving this. You're having a good time so far? All right. Now we're getting ready to get down and dirty here. Now, let's just check, make sure how our, uh, how our bake is going in here. See it? And it got nice steam going on. All right. Smelling good. Kind of got a little bit of that New Orleans thing going on too. That, smell that crab oil? Woohoo! Yes, indeed. All right, that's working. Now, going back to the chowder. You see, this is a good thickness right here. Perfect amount of roux, okay? Now we gotta cook that roux out a little bit, stir it a little bit. Here's the thing. Right now is about when you wanna taste it to see if it needs a little adjustment, okay? That's what people gotta do, they gotta season. First you season, then you re-season. Sometimes you gotta re-season again. You don't have to re-season if you wanna use your family as guinea pigs. <laughs> now, mm. but that's when it, your brain will tell you, more salt, oh, I like a little more pepper, oh, it's not seasoned enough, okay? Now we're gonna take quartered potatoes inside here. That's going to give it a little bit of thickness, too. And obviously, the potatoes are going to start absorbing. They're going to start absorbing some of that flavor and some of the seasonings. So we'll add just a little pinch of salt. And now comes the time whether you want to use milk or cream or half and half for your chowder, or you can leave it like this. I am like it a little more creamier, right? So we're going to add some of that. Right in there. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. We're going to work that in there now. The potatoes are in there. See, the lobster's cooked, and the corn isn't going to take very long. Okay? I'm going to chop up that lobster meat in bite sized pieces in a little bit. But first, before I do that, I promised you another treat, even though we're inside. We're going to make some clam cakes now. Oh, yeah, baby. This is a clam knife, okay? This is a clam knife. It's made very thin. It's not very sharp, obviously, because you've got to open the clams. And I'm only showing you this in case you can't find shucked clams. Like, you can go to a lot of seafood places, and they'll have fresh shucked clams. See, you've got to kind of get that knife in there, and you push it in. It'll open up. Then you chop them up, okay? Some people think you should do it with uh, coags. These are good sized clams for this kind of thing. The other thing you can do is go to your fishmonger. Most of them have fresh chopped clams. That's what I got this morning. What I've been doing is draining them because they'll come in this clam juice, which is also very, very good. You can use this inside the batter. You can also use this inside of this chowder. Now, I'm going to sift these dry ingredients. I got flour. Salt, baking powder. Those are the dry ingredients. Now, to this, I'm going to make 
a clam cake batter. So what I'm going to do now is this. I'm going to add an egg, and I'm going to add a little bit of milk. But I'm not only just going to add milk. We're going to stir this up. We're going to make a batter. Now, see, it's too thick because I didn't add all the milk. The reason why I'm not going to add all the milk is because I'm going to add a little bit of this clam juice to give it a little flavor. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> Talk about the sea, right? So now we're going to stir this in. Beside that, I'm going to stir in some green onions, shallots. Got to have some garlic in there, right? Yeah. Little parsley. Now, how thick should this batter be? Well, you can always, if it's too thin, you can always add a little flour to this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add our chopped clams and fold the chopped clams in here. Now, before you go do this, you can make this the day before, but what I really recommend you do, folks, is this. You got to try one, okay? You got to try one. The best thing I do, you bring vegetable oil up, whether you're doing it on a pot, outside, etc. You don't want to have the pot too full. Vegetable oil about 360 degrees. What I do before I stop frying them all is try one to see if the batter is going to hold up. That will tell you whether you need to add a bit more flour to that or not. See, it's looking really good. Let's see if it pops. Look at that. You see that? Perfect amount. So we've got, we've got the stovetop kicked up lobster bake on the stove. The chowder, look at this, simmering away now with the potatoes in there. Okay? All right. When we come back, another knot. Stick around. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We're clam baking up a storm right now. We got a lot of stuff going on. Those clam cakes or clam fritters, if you will, they're in the oil, 350, 360 degrees. You got to turn them around. They're like little donuts, right? See, this is where I could use one of them assistants, you know? Why not? Yeah. So now, once we get the crab, uh, the clam cakes going on, now watch this. Over here, I was uh, cutting up that lobster meat into bite-sized pieces because the potatoes are fork tender now. All right, when the potatoes are fork tender, that's when we're going to come over here now and add our delicious sweet corn. Mm. Oh, yeah, man. Get that sweet corn going, and once that goes for a little bit, then we'll add the lobster meat in there. Okay, now, you see how it's gotten thicker? It's gotten a little thicker because the potatoes. That's what I told you earlier, save that clam juice. You see, you can add a little bit of that to it to thin it out a bit, or add a little bit more if you want. You could always add a little bit more milk. All right, wait, switch back over here. <laughs> now, we got these clam cakes. See, they're all nice and poofy. Oh, yeah, babe. Yeah, you know, here's what we're going to do. Do you think we should have a tartar sauce with these? Yeah. Twist my arm. <laughs> I'm up for the challenge. Remember, whatever you're frying, as soon as they're hot, season them with salt, pepper. I'm going to use a little essence like this, OK? All right? Doc, these are hot, man. Oh, man. They're hot, so be careful. Okay. Now, tartar sauce, no big deal. You want, here's the challenge. I got some mayonnaise. Here's what we're going to do, a little salt, bam. Yeah, humidity. <laughs> a little cayenne. 
Got some mustard. Oh, we're going to fry some more of those up, too. Capers, smashed up. Little parsley. Little vinegar. <laughs> Pickle relish. Green onions. Parsley. Juice of a little lemon. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> All right, now there we have tartar sauce. You happy? Yeah. Here's what I do. A little tartar sauce like this, smear it. Smear it. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. See, you just dip it like that. <laughs> dip it like that. Thank you. Tell them at home there's only 60 million viewers watching right now. Very good. Good? Mm -hmm. Tastes like clams, huh? Tastes uh, like clams. A lot of times you get these fritters, they don't taste like clams. Okay? They taste like, I don't know. They don't taste like clams. Because they don't put enough clams in there or something. I don't know. These taste like clams. Aren't those good? All right, now, we got clam cakes. We're going to fry some more. Tartar sauce. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, it ain't going to take long for this chowder. Here's what we want to do. We want to make sure that all the potatoes are fork tender. <laughs> I don't like a mushy, though, do you? Uh, I need another minute or two. <laughs> but what you do want to do, folks, is this. Taste it. Does it need to get more seasoning? That's what you got to taste it. Or you're going to serve it. To me, it's pretty good. <laughs> going to add a little salt, a little more pepper. All right, now we're just going to finish that. Let the potatoes get happy. I'll show you how we're going to dish that up in a second. Back to the clam bake. You guys are with me? Yeah. Okay, look, the lobsters are steamed. They're looking really, really good. Now what we're going to do is add one more layer. Are you with me? Yeah. Beautiful mussels and clams. We'll just put those right on top like that. How about some asparagus? Oh, yes, indeed. A little more seaweed. Oh, wait, we got, got some sand on that. We don't want any sand in there. All right, here we go. Putting this back on. We got clam fritters. We got lobster corn chowder. And we got a serious kicked up clam bake, right? When we come back, wait till you see what it looks like. Stick around. Right there. excited. I can't even talk. <laughs> Cooking a little beach party tonight here on Emerald Live. And uh, we took it inside. Hey, you got some foul weather. Maybe you live somewhere that's not even remotely close to a beach. Take it inside like we did. Now, clam cakes are out. Go ahead. Now, let me give you a couple of secrets on the finishing touches here, folks. A, you got to go back Make sure, again, that the chowder is seasoned. 
and mmm, perfect. Oh, oh! I'm gonna give you a little Emerald Lagasse secret. How I like to finish this. <laughs> Shh, don't tell everybody. They'll all be doing it. Just a little bit of butter, like this, right at the end. Just a little bit like this. Few. This is a secret. <laughs> All right, there's that secret I let you in on. Fold that butter in there. Then, little lobster chowder, sweet corn. Doesn't that look fantastic? Garnish that with a little bit of chives like that. You guys can share that. Remember what I told you, I don't like the potatoes mushy. They still got a little bite to them. I like that, little al dente. I want to taste the potato. I don't want it to make, be a potato soup. Okay, so there you have that. Okay, so there's the chowder, folks. Now, you need a little drawn butter for your kicked up clam bake. So you melt some butter. If you took the top of it off and left away the milky pot, you'd have clarified butter. That's that expression. What I like to do is kick it up. I take the juice, how is it? The juice of a lemon, put it inside of a bowl like this. Then I take my melted butter. Shh. They'll all be doing this now. Stop. <laughs> Pour the melted butter in there. Now I got lemon butter. Yeah. Portuguese ingenuity. <laughs> all right, now, here's what we're going to do. The top is off now. What we'll do is we'll take a few, these beautiful asparagus on the bottom, nice and steamed. Oh, yes, indeedy. Take some mussels, clams, some more clams. Oh, I'm going to turn the heat down now. That's it. It is done. It is time to ring the dinner bell. <laughs> yes. Can you imagine how the neighborhood right now would be reacting? <laughs> what your family would be doing? Even if it's pouring down rain, we took it inside, right? Some more asparagus. Here come the artichokes. Look at this, huh? See the artichokes right there? Here comes some of the onion. Oh, oh yes. Oh wait, here comes the sausage. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes, here comes the sausage. Oh, yes. Look at this. Oh. Here comes more sausage, Mom. See this seaweed right here? Oh, look at this. See, there's the Italian sausage right there. Oh, yeah, babe. I think we need some more mussels. All right, move over. Let's see what we got going on here. Can you feel the love right now? Oh, yes, look at this. More lobster. Oh, and more lobster like this. Look at this, huh? Oh, wait, here comes the sausage! Oh, unbelievable. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, look. You see, you get that artichoke like that. See, you can just get that leave and you... Oh. Another lobster. Oh, yes, indeed. All right, look. We're going to have a feast here. Yes, indeed, we're going to have a feast here. So, look. You can take it inside, right? Layer it. Those hot ingredients first, build it like that. 
You should taste this chowder. It is unbelievable with the sweet corn and those clam cakes. Well, anyhow, I guess you had to have been here with us. I want to thank everybody for joining me tonight. Yes, indeed. Are you guys ready to have a beach party? Yeah. Hey, I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow.